Hello everyone, welcome back to The Herbal Bunny. My name is Tamitha. I am a master herbalist and graduating this year, I will be a naturopath. I've been watching a lot of videos here recently on other gardeners getting their seeds and stuff and kind of talking about why they like certain plants and what grows well in their area. And I've been kind of doing the same thing. If you watch the previous videos, you'll see that I planted some flower seeds that my friend had gifted to me and some artichokes um, and in late December or late January sorry this is still early February I think today's like the 5th or the 6th of, of uh, February I got some seeds in from the MI Gardener and I wanted to share with you some herbs since I am an herbalist the herbs I'm going to be planting this year and uh, talking to you a little bit about the benefits of each one I have three separate piles here. So there's like regular medicinal ones and there's some that people like to use um, for like culinary purposes. And then there's um, another one that I really like and I just wanted to spend a little bit of time talking about. So let's get started with the first set. Okay, so the first one I wanna talk about is Bee Balm. I got all of these seeds from the MR Gardener. Uh, I do have some others from Baker Creek Seeds. Um, but I got these ones first, so bee balm. So bee balm, I have not grown it, and I have used it in the past when I had actually just got um, a plant from somebody who did some clippings. But bee balm is really good for gas, cramps, anything with your digestive system. It's really great for that. It also helps uh, soothe sore throats. Um, it also acts as an expectorant. So if you have uh, a lot of phlegm in your chest or you get getting over a cold or flu or whatever um, smokers can also use it it helps to get all the phlegm out of your your lungs so bee balm definitely a good one to have around the next one one of my favorites i actually have some growing out in the yard they didn't do so great last year because our spring really sucked but uh i did want to get some of some new seeds, see how these ones grow, and see if um, they'll re. So chamomile, I really like it um, when I go to bed. I About a half an hour before I go to bed, I'll make a tea. It really helps to calm my anxiety, helps you sleep. It also um, is a good anti-inflammatory. So if you have like colds, flus, you can also use it like on your skin, make a poultice out of it, or uh, a decoction, so a, a cloth in there and put it on any like uh, scrapes, cuts, bug bites, things like that really helps with that. It also um, again with your with just like the bee balm with your throat these would go really well together um, to help with any sort of skin issues, sore throat, um, also eczema too. Uh, I've had people talk about how they've used chamomile for eczema. So sorry if I'm going to go through these really fast because uh, YouTube does not like me to post videos over 15 minutes, so I'm trying to keep this short. So my next one is marigold, and I've grown different types of marigold. I have not grown this particular one. I think this is what mint, yeah, Mexican mint marigold. So I'm just kind of curious to see how well that will work. So this one also um, skin healing. These would go great together. Um, you can also use it for um, as a precursor for the uptake of vitamin A. So if you have low vitamin A, you could do that. It's yeah, it's really good for your skin. Anything and uh, skin rashes, eczema, things like that. Just like with the chamomile and the bee balm, you could use that, and it um, helps protect from uh, UV damage, like sunburn, blurries. You can also make a decoction out of that and put that on your skin that out. This next one I have not tried, I have not grown, I have not used in any way. A friend of mine was talking to me about it and so I decided to get it. I don't know how to pronounce that. Spilanthes. <laughs> but it's a, it's a toothache plant and the name says it all. It really helps with toothaches. Uh, I've done some research on it. Uh, I'm kind of curious to see what it, if it gives like a numbing effect. I know like echinacea you can use the seeds and um, bite on that and there's another one out. Um, I think caraway is another one, and I actually have that in my stack that you can 
um, help with toothaches. But I'm really curious. I don't get toothaches, but uh, I'm just kind of curious to see if it has like that numbing effect in my mouth. My next one is all-time favorite, lavender. I like to use lavender essential oils in my diffuser. This is really great as anti-inflammatory. It helps with menopause symptoms, cramps, um, hot flashes, it helps reduce your blood pressure, reduce your heart rates, very calming. Um, it helps with like mental stuff too. So if you have depression and anxiety and um, just feeling kind of down, you can use that. Another one of my favorites, marshmallow. So you, um, you can use the leaves, but majority of um, herbalists, they use the root. It's a mucilaginous, so it kind of has like a jelly, slimy feeling when you use it. And you can make a tea out of it. You can drink it if you have any stomach ulcers, digestive issues. It kind of just lines and coats your, your inner lining of your stomach, your esophagus, and throughout your digestive tract and helps heal up any ulcers and things that are in there. Um, it helps with cough. It's also great for skin irritations, just like the other ones. A lot of these are really great for your skin. So if you have like cuts and scrapes, you can actually take some of the leaf, you could chew it up and just put it right on there. And it's like very, very soothing, be really good for if you have sunburns as well. All right, let's get into the mint family. This one here is called lemon mint. I did buy a plant Unfortunately, my cat decided to use the box as a litter box, and there went my lemon mint. So uh, I did taste it. It does have like a, a lemony uh, flavor to it. So mint, all the members of the mint family has like a square stem. That's how you can kind of uh, tell from any of the species of the mint family. So mint is really good for indigestion, for gas. Um, IBS, upset stomach, helps with brain function, colds, flus. Um, however, you don't want to take mint if you're having acid reflux because it can actually make it worse. Another member of the mint family is hyssop. I did have one of these bushes out in my yard and it looked awesome. It was, oh, I just loved it. My husband ran over it with a lawnmower. <laughs> They've used this in, in the biblical times. They, uh, there's been a few passages where I've uh, read that they had used hyssop um, for medicinal purposes. But this is really good for your liver, your gallbladder, any um, digestive issues that you may have, um, gas, stomach pains, spasms in your um, stomach. It's really good for that. Another member of the mint family is spearmint. I have used spearmint mainly in gum. <laughs> <laughs> but um, not medicinally I have not used this one but um, it helps to balance out hormones um, also any blood pressure blood sugar digestive issues just the same as the other mints um, again you don't want to take them if you have current acid reflux or heartburn all right the birds and the butterflies love milkweed and I actually like the smell of it. I think it has like a sweet smell to it. But the next one is coneflower, AKA echinacea. And this is the one I talked to you about with the toothache plant that you can put on your tooth, the, the seeds, and it helps with that. It's anti-inflammatory. You can use it internal, externally. It helps boost your immune system. Um, my mother, she had this big, huge, um, skin where her skin is really thin and they had an IV in her arm and they ripped her skin and I had put some ech echinacea um, from my garden leaves on there they're kind of a little rough so you have to kind of beat them up a little bit and put it on there in three days it was awesome it helped with any uh, infection that was setting in the next one a good old liver herb is milk thistle you use the milk thistle seeds it's really great for your gallbladder and good for your um, liver, especially your liver. Um, it helps with diabetes, indigestion, things like that. Um, but mainly it's your BFF for your liver. And the last medicinal herb is St. John's wort, or medicinal flower, flowering herbs and stuff, St. John's wort. So I have used St. John's wort for um, colds and flus and pain, like, um, like in one of my salves I use St. John's wort. Um, it's also 
really good for if you have depression, anxiety, any mental issues. Uh, however, you don't want to use St. John's Wort if you're currently taking any anti-anxiety or antidepressant medication. So you want to not be taking that because it <clears throat> can slow the effects of the medication um, or the absorption of the medication is the way that you metabolize it and then you get like a whole bunch of it at one time. So you want to just make sure you're not combining those. All right, so culinary herbs. We have anise. And this one's really good for gas and bloating. It's also antifungal, helps with stomach ulcers, helps to regulate blood sugar, um, menopausal symptoms, things like that. I actually like to, to chew on it. I like making um, candy. <laughs> Candy's bad for you, just so you know. All right, my next one, my husband killed this plant that I had, my rosemary that I had was gifted to me. And rosemary is actually really good for your brain, for any um, cognitive issues that you may have. It helps boost your immune system. It's good for blood circulation. It's a blood circulating to your brain. It kind of gives you mental alertness and awareness and things like that. All right, for the sake of time, let's get through these. We have cumin. This is a great culinary herb. It's anti-cancer properties. It has anti-cancer properties. It helps blood sugar. Um, helps with bacteria, parasites, um, helps with diarrhea, helps lower bad cholesterol, your LDL reduce, reduces bad cholesterol. Next one, what's the dill dill? <laughs> My husband loves dill pickles, so I got this for the dill pickles, but medicinally, it also can help with um, lowering your bad cholesterol, the LDL. It helps with um, heart attack, strokes, things like that. And I guess it's really good in pickles. <laughs> I like the pickle juice, not too bad. All right, we have caraway. So you can actually chew on these seeds. Helps uh, with your breath and stuff. It also helps with uh, mild stomach spasms, any digestive issues you may have, constipation, gas, bloating. Um, it also is an expectorant, and it can also help if you have uh, incontinary, incontinence, incontinary, incontinence issues. All right, fennel. My uh, grandbaby twins, they had colic, so this is really good for colic. And they also, uh, with the, the chamomile, because the chamomile, oh, focus, 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 focus back. Here, come back to me, there we go. Okay, so um, yeah, fennel is really, really good for um, colicky babies, gas. It also has high potassium, anti-inflammatory, um, antiviral, helps with uh, blood pressure. All right, so my next one that I want to talk about are basil. I absolutely love basil. I have like a, a giant basil plant. I think it's called Giant King Basil, something like that. But I got like five different basil. Some people call them basil, whatever. But I have um, the blue spice, I have cinnamon, I have the spicy globe licorice and the black opal. Um, I have regular basil, I guess, um, already growing. I had got from one of the box stores. But basil um, really helps you to have clarity, helps you think clearer. It helps uh, people with memory issues, anti-inflammatory. It helps with anxiety. I have huge an anxiety. I, I want to say had a huge anxiety. I, I get it every now and again when I've got a lot of stuff thrown at me. Um, but... I use it in my diffuser, the, the basil essential oil, and with um, sage, and just kind of just purifies the air and helps to just calm me down. And put, you can even put some lavender in there too, and that really would help. And then I drink my chamomile tea before bed and um, lemon lemon balm tea. I have that growing everywhere. Lemon balm. AKA Melissa, it takes over everything. I had it one section out here and I was like, okay, I want to put it into a pot because it's like taking over my whole entire bed. So I ripped it out before it bloomed and flowered with the seed, threw it down at the hill. Well, guess what? It's all over my hillside. So it's meant to be in my life to take over. And that's okay because it has a lot of good medicinal purposes. All right, you guys, I hope you enjoy the video and hopefully I didn't ramble too fast there at the end I was just trying to keep everything condensed in like 15 minutes so 
All right, go ahead, like, subscribe, share the video, and if you have any questions, go ahead and leave them down in the comments. Bye.